Good morning everyone, it's Kelly here. And today we are going to review conflict resolution. And this is actually going to be a two part series on conflict resolution. Some of you might remember that we did this type of series last year and we wanted to do it again because we find that, you know, conflicts happen all the time. You know, sometimes we see them on our Zoom calls. Sometimes they're just personal conflicts or conflicts at program. And so we just wanted to provide a reminder um, of just how we can successfully manage conflicts and then resolve them when they happen. And so we're going to do part one today and then part two is going to be on Wednesday. Um, so let's get started by talking about conflicts in general. So a conflict is a disagreement between people, you know, and there's a variety of conflicts that we might experience but some that might sound familiar to you or are maybe when somebody says something that upsets us on a zoom call or maybe a family member expresses a political belief that we don't agree with or maybe our provider has asked us to do a tour around the house that we don't want to do or maybe our sibling or a roommate um, keeps going to the bathroom when we need to get ready for program which causes us to be late for our van or maybe, um, you know, you learn that um, your friend um, told someone a secret that you asked them not to tell. Or, you know, maybe we weren't chosen for a new job assignment and just really don't understand why. You know, so these are just some examples of conflicts that we might see throughout our day or maybe throughout our week. And so it's important to note that not all conflicts need to be handled in the same way. You know, sometimes um, you can look at a conflict with somebody and just come to an understanding that um, each person has a different point of view on the issue. Um, and for some conflicts, the issue might need to be talked about at another time. Um, sometimes when we're in the midst of a conflict, things can get kind of heated and um, people might get angry or, or upset. And so during those instances, it's definitely best to talk about the conflict at another time. Um, but we wanted to review today how to communicate during a conflict. And, um, you know, one thing that we want to note is that, you know, conflicts, like I said, they, they bring about different types of emotions. You know, so we might feel anger. We might feel sadness in, in a conflict, um, frustration, or maybe even anxiety. And so it's important to recognize the emotions that we're feeling so that we um, don't escalate the situation. You know, our goal should be to communicate our um, thoughts in a calm and respectful manner um, so that the conflict can be rectified or resolved. So we wanted to look at three different scenarios where um, we have conflict and how to work through these situations. And so we broke it up into first, if your conflict is in person, second, if your conflict is over the phone, and third, if your conflict is through some sort of messaging system. So we provided you guys with some different steps on how to communicate during the conflict. And so we're just gonna go through those together in this video. So first, if you have a conflict that's in person, um, you wanna, start taking some deep breaths to help your body to calm down. So let's take two deep breaths right now. So we want to go in through our nose and out through our mouth. One. Two. You know, so even taking two deep breaths in the couple seconds of that took us can really be helpful if you are in the midst of a conflict. And you don't have to close your eyes like I did, right? You know, you can just sit there, take a couple deep breaths, and then say something. But really helping your body to come in the midst of a conflict is really important because that is how you're going to be able to communicate calmly. Um, so take some deep breaths. Um, next, we would encourage you to try to respond in a calm and neutral manner. Now, this isn't always easy, right? Sometimes we can be in a conflict and respond calmly and other times we can't. And so the important part of step three is that if you find yourself becoming more upset, 
or you find the other person um, becoming more upset, um, it's good to just ask to end the discussion. Um, because if you think the discussion is kind of going a bit out of control where um, both of you are having a hard time talking about it, it's just best to end it and to come back at another time. Now, if the person that you're talking to doesn't want to end the discussion and you really feel that you need to, it's important to let the person that you know that you are done talking about the issue and to walk away. You know, so you might walk into another room or maybe walk to your own room. Um, but that is just a helpful way to just kind of separate yourself from the situation. Um, and it can be hard, right? Especially if we have somebody that's kind of coming towards us as they're upset or, um, you know, I know that there have been times where I feel like people have been talking down to me and I kind of don't know what to do, but trying to separate yourself the best you can, being calm but assertive and saying, I'm done talking about this right now. Let's talk about it later. And removing yourself is a, a good technique to use. So next, next, let's look at um, if you have a conflict over the phone. So again, we would encourage you to be taking a couple deep breaths. Um, if you find that you kind of feel yourself getting upset, you want to try to respond in that calm, neutral manner like we talked about. And then if you find yourself becoming more upset or you find that the other person is becoming more upset, um, you want to ask to end the discussion. And if the person does not want to end the discussion, but you feel that you really need to, you can let the person know that you are ending the discussion, that you will talk about it at another time, and hang up the phone. And so you can see, you know, it's kind of a little easier to end the discussion over the phone versus in person, um, you know, since you can just hang up the phone. But either way, you know, it takes courage to be able to end it. And then next we wanted to talk about if your conflict is through text, through email, social media, or any other form of messaging. So we want to start again with those deep breaths. We want to remember that what you write cannot be taken back. And so you want to respond to your messages calmly and you want to reread before sending. Now, let me be honest, this can be hard for me sometimes because if I'm feeling upset about something that someone has said or done, you know, I just kind of want to send the first thing that comes to my mind. But it's really important to reread that again, because I found that sometimes I um, sent something that I shouldn't have, or if I've reread it and adjusted it, I'm glad that I didn't send it. And then if you find yourself becoming more upset, or the other person seems to really be escalating, you know, maybe um, the other person is saying mean things or maybe writing things in all capital letters. You can kind of see that they're upset. Ask to end the discussion. And if they don't want to end the discussion, you can tell them that you are ending it and just close out the application. And even if the person continues sending messages to you, you just, I would say, just do your best to not look at your phone or whatever device you're using until you're calm and you can kind of go back and read it later. And so it's really important to know that responding calmly in a conflict is difficult. And so if you find that you're having trouble in a conflict, you know, let somebody know that you trust. You know, that's something that we, you know, talk about sometimes on our Zoom calls, where if somebody is, um, you know, having a difficulty maybe in the chat, you know, um, you guys might send a direct message to whoever is running the Zoom so that we can kind of rectify and help the situation. So feel free to reach out to any of us on the Zooms or, you know, if it's a conflict at home, you can reach out to somebody at home or, you know, a staff provider, somebody to help you because sometimes conflicts can be di very difficult for sure. Um, so we provided you guys with an anger coaster worksheet, which I think you've seen before. And so that talks about how um, our anger can kind of escalate and come up kind of like a roller coaster. And, you know, this is true of any emotion we have. You know, this can be anger, this can be sadness, even happiness. Um, but we're focusing on anger with this because, you know, strong emotions like anger are things that we really don't want to see escalate all the way up top. So we just want to encourage you guys to be using your self-calming techniques when you feel your anger start to rise. So I know I've said in the past that when I start to feel angry, I can kind of feel like, my blood boil almost, where I feel like this heat inside of me. So during those instances, I know that I need to take a deep breath. And you know, if that doesn't work, 
then you know I my voice kind of starts to sound shaky and so maybe I need to step away from the situation and come back later so it's just being able to try a different the different coping skills and relaxation techniques so that I don't escalate to the point where I'm yelling and screaming and so that's why as you're going up the coaster you want to keep using those self calming techniques so that you can shift off and calm down so we hope you guys enjoy what we've posted today. We hope that this information is helpful as uh, you learn to continue to resolve conflicts. And on Wednesday, we are going to look at how to resolve a conflict that needs attention. And then we're also going to review apologies and forgiveness. So we look forward to seeing you guys on our Zoom calls later and uh, finishing up this two-part session with you on Wednesday.